In the last two videos, we introduced the subgradient method um, to, in order to minimize a convex function um, with real values in a finite dimensional inner product space. The subgradient method is given by this um, iteration. And we made the assumption that x bar is a minimizer of f. So the, in particular, the set of minimizers should not be empty. And we were able to derive this um, useful inequality here. And in order to use this inequality effectively, um, we wanted to make the assumption that the sum of these terms here is uh, finite. And the first consequence we got was that um, the limit of um, these terms exists, so the limit of the square distance to a solution um, of all these iterations xn exists, and in particular that xn is bounded. So we made these assumptions here, um, these with these bullet, bullet points, and we got uh, so far two um, results from it. And um, what we're going to do now is we want to uh, refine these results and um, to, to bring us forward on our way to prove the convergence of this method under some, uh, uh, under some yeah, appropriate assumptions. So um, we have sh so far shown that the sequence xn is bounded. Now what, we're, what we want to do is show that also the sequence of subgradients Sn is bounded, so that um, cannot happen, for example, for example, that whenever you get closer and closer to a solution that uh, these subgradients tend to, to infinity or so, which would uh, basically spoil the convergence here because this iteration would get insta uh, unstable. So, um, uh, what what we're going to use for this is the result on the local Lipschitz continuity of the function f, which we have, and so we have established this in a in an earlier video. And what we're also going to use is the boundedness of this sequence here, uh, the sequence x n. Okay, um, so now. Uh, just to recap, so the goal is uh, to show that Sn uh, is a bounded sequence. Okay, um, what we're we, we're basically only using the fact that the sequence Xn is bounded in order to show this. Um, so. Um, define the set S, and S um, is, uh, in our case, the closure of all our uh, points here, x1, x, uh, so x0, and so on. So we have infinitely many points, and we just take the closure of this. So what do we have? So the sequence of these of these x0, x1, x2 is bounded. So what do we have? S is bounded. And obviously, since S is the closure of something, S is closed. And now for, for, for this um, subset of a finite dimensional space, which is bounded and closed, um, we can apply the so-called Heine-Borel uh, theorem, um, which which tells us that whenever we have a a, a cover of this set with open sets, um, then we find a finite subcover which still covers the same uh, set. Uh, so, and the subcover only takes um, sets from the from the original cover. Okay. So now, what are we going to cover this set with? Well, with these um, balls where we have the Lipschitz property. Um, that's, the, that's the focus here. So, by the local Lipschitz continuity, of f on the interior of the domain, 
and we are lucky since we assume that it only has real value the domain of f is just the the whole space and the interior of the whole space is the whole space itself so great so we are locally Lipschitz continuity on the whole space so in particular we are um, we we have this local this property also for s okay so this is a subset of, uh, a superset of s and by this, for each um, point x in S, there exists some epsilon x uh, associated with x um, greater than zero. This is the radius of the ball of um, where we have this Lipschitz continuity property and we have a Lipschitz constant so uh, this means that <clears throat> f is Lipschitz continuous with constant Lx on the <clears throat> um, epsilon x ball around x. All right. So now these well, we we want to take the open the open balls only, but this is easy to fix. So. Um, now we use our heine boyle theorem and, and these, uh, the, the open balls give an open cover of our set S. So, um, the family of these B epsilon X of X and actually, we're not taking the, these balls themselves. We are taking only their interior, so the open balls, so that we don't take the, the, the boundary. Okay, and we take this with x in S. S can possibly t uh, contain infinitely many uh, elements and will, in general, conti contain infinitely many um, elements. So this family has... Um, or oh, not has, is, Ugh, that's messy, okay, let me clean this up, so is an open cover of S. What does this mean? So, um well it's um it it's a family of open sets because we are only taking the the open balls that's the interior of these balls and uh every point x in s is covered by the ball around x so this um thing here obviously contains x okay so for all x in s uh, there exists some ball uh, so that the ball is in, in uh, so that X is in this ball. So um, this is a cover of of the set S, and it's an open cover. Okay, and therefore we have an we have an open um, we have a finite subcover. So by the so-called heine borel theorem. There exists. There exists just um, a finite number of points. Um, I think we have not used m yet, so we can we can we we can just um, um, yeah, we can just use this. Um, such that 
well, S is contained in, yeah, that looks fine, in, in, in just, and here I have to use XI, in just this finite collection here. So this finite collection is a superset of S. Okay. So we have now we have now this cover of of Lipschitz domains, and we have we have found a finite uh, selection of these Lipschitz domains such that S is covered by these finite number of of domains. And another property we proved in our in our video was that any uh, Lipschitz constant, so any uh, any yeah any Lipschitz constant. Uh, implied that the subgradient, um, um, yeah, the subgradient was bounded by the norm by by this. So the norm of the subgradient was bounded by the Lipschitz constant L x. So uh, now I have it. And uh, for any point in the interior of this ball, obviously you can find a smaller bo ball around them because we don't have the boundary so every point is in the interior and therefore there exists a smaller ball around them so that um, um, yes yeah, so, so that um, it's also Lipschitz constant around the the new point so what I mean is uh, if we have this xi here and we have just some point x here, then we also have this smaller ball such that L, the, the, this Lx is also a Lipschitz constant around x. So for all elements in this ball, um, for all, uh, let's say, uh, y in interior of B epsilon xi uh, of xi, we have that um, L, L xi is a Lipschitz constant around y, okay? So the same Lipschitz constant uh, as we have for, for this for this large ball is also around uh, is a Lipschitz constant around any point and I of course should be consistent in my naming so this should be a y here okay is a Lipschitz constant around y okay and by what we have shown in the in the video with the local Lipschitz continuity we have that. Um, uh, the norm of S is less or equal than L X Y for all Y in this interior B epsilon X I X I. Okay. So this means that we have uh, we have a bound for 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 the norm in each of the balls. And we have that S is covered by a finite number of, of such balls, so that we can say, well, let L, capital L, be um, the maximum of these Lipschitz constants. So the maximum of uh, Lx1 till Lxn. So we have a finite number, so this maximum is also um, a real number as are these Lipschitz constants. Um, so this means that um, for all y in the set S, uh, what do we have? We have, this is the, the union of, of this finite number of balls, so there exists um, an i in this set, so so some index such that 
y is in the interior of b epsilon xi of xi. Okay, so for all y and s, and now we use this property, and all s in uh, the subdifferential of f at y, what do we have then? Since y is in this uh, ball, we have, um, so there exists i in 1m, such that norm of s less or equal than lxi. And since um, l is this maximum, this is also less or equal than l. Okay, so now we have for all y and s, and also all subgradients s in, 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 at y, um, this does not appear in the final result anymore, this i, so the norm of s is less or equal than l. So this means, so we can, we can actually, if we, if we leave out this, then we can leave out uh, this existence statement for the i. Okay. Um, okay, since x0, x1, and so on are elements, in of s, of course, because s is the closure of these, so s is larger. So we then have that for all, uh, sorry, for all, um, now we go back to, the, to our iteration, n greater than or equal than zero, we have that sn is, D, is in df of xn, and so Sn is in Df of Xn and Xn is in S. So we have norm of S less or equal than L. Okay. So what we have now proven is that, um, um, of course, Sn, of course. So we, what we have now shown is that um, this, uh, the norm of all of these Sn's in our iteration is less or equal than L. L is a real number. And therefore, this means that um, the sequence Sn is bounded. Okay. So this was what I wanted to show for now. And the next point will be to further um, milk our cow this, this inequality here. And then we will also use um, the function value uh, in this inequality. Um, and by this, uh, we will get, get, a, lot of, get a, lot of, a lot more information and we will also see where, uh, what the relevance of the boundedness of these subgradients is.